Trialophosaurus, or his unofficial but far more dazzling epithet, Elvisaurus. The continent of Antarctica has two major dinosaur-bearing rock formations. So far, all known specimens of Cryolophosaurus have been recovered in the Hansen Formation. This formation was once called the Upper Fala. It was deposited in an active volcano-tectonic rift system formed during the times when Gondwana broke up. Paleontologist Dr. William Hammer from Augustana College and his team found Cryolophosaurus in 1991. The fossils came from Tufisha siltstone deposits of the Sinumerian Tupiansbachian stage of the early Jurassic, which is roughly dated to 194 to 188 million years ago. Scientists worked through the Austral summer on the famous Mount Kilpatrick in the Beardmore Glacial region of the Transantarctic Mountains. This lofty and generally ice-free mountain is the highest point of Antarctica's Queen Alexandra Range and is located 8 kilometers or 5 miles west of Mount Dickerson. Mount Kilpatrick forms part of the Victoria Group of the Transantarctic Mountains, which is about 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet above sea level. Cryolophosaurus wasn't the first dinosaur to be discovered in Antarctica. This place belongs to the herbivorous Antarctopelta. However, it was definitely the first theropod to be unearthed there. The excavation was shared between Hammer and David Elliott, the geologist from Ohio State University. Both teams worked separately near Beardmore Glacier, sharing logistical expenses, which was a logical thing to do. Elliott's group was the first to come across the remains of Cryolophosaurus in the area around 640 kilometers or 400 miles from the South Pole, although it was much further north, about 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles at the time this dinosaur lived. Once Hammer was notified, the team excavated 2,300 kilograms or 5,100 pounds of fossil-bearing rock with over 100 fossil bones, including those of Cryolophosaurus. Unearthing the fossil had taken them over three weeks. The holotype of this theropod was formally named and described in 1994 by Hammer and Hickerson in the Science Journal, and the genus is known from only one single species, Cryolophosaurus eleotai. More bones have been discovered in following years. Cryolophosaurus was probably the apex predator of the early Jurassic period. The Glacialisaurus, a large basal sauropodomorph, was most likely to be at the top of the list of its menu. It may also have preyed on young or sick individuals. And as with many other predators, it was probably an opportunistic, scavenging on the corpses of other dead animals. Scientists found the remains of a post-canine tooth belonging to Tritelodont, an early mammal relative, in the Cryolophosaurus's stomach contents when it died, suggesting that this predator wouldn't say no to smaller prey as well. A crow-sized pterosaur was also believed to be living amongst other animals in the handsome formation. Dense plant material had once grown on Antarctica's surface, providing food to herbivorous creatures. The name Cryolophosaurus is derived from the Greek words cryos, meaning cold or frozen, in reference to its discovery in Antarctica, lophos, meaning crest, and sauros, meaning lizard. Thus, in combination, it means cold-crested lizard. The specific name Eriotai was given by Hammer and Hickerson in honor of David Elliott, an Australian scientist who initially discovered the fossils of this animal. However, back in the early Jurassic times, the continent looked quite different and was not frozen. When Pangaea split into two land masses, Antarctica was further north, close to the equator, on the edge of the southern supercontinent of Gondwana. It is quite possible that it formed a collection of islands 
during the Mesozoic. Also, it was a much warmer environment than today, although not tropical. Coastal areas probably had better conditions, with temperatures hardly dropping much below freezing. Chylophosaurus must have learned how to bear the climatic anomalies. It possibly preferred to live in wet temperature forests and dominated these areas. Antarctica in the early Jurassic had forests populated by a diverse range of species, especially along the coast. The daylight dominated summers, whereas winters were cold and dark, as they are now. Cryolophosaurus was a well-built theropod, one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs of its time. It is thought of Cryolophosaurus to be one of the largest theropods in the early Jurassic. The holotype represents a sub-adult form that would have reached 6 to 7 meters or 20 to 23 feet in length, with the weight being around 350 to 465 kilograms or 772 to 1,025 pounds. It is believed that if this individual lived to its adulthood, it could have been much larger. A wrinkled nasal crest ran just above the eyes, forming a fan or comb-like look. Scientists argued about the purpose of such an unusual cranial ornamentation. The traditional functional hypothesis was either for attracting mates, intimidating or fighting competitors in the group, or most likely for scaring potential predators of other species. The crest was too fragile to be used in combat. And the recent studies suggest that these theropods were territorial and it wasn't used as interspecies recognition, but in breeding contests. Unlike in most theropods, Crylophosaurus had a distinctive pompadour crest bridged over the head from side to side. Researchers believe that the females were more likely to be attracted to the males with bigger head crests. Before the dinosaur was formally described, this peculiar crest that resembles the hairstyle of the legendary Elvis Presley earned the animal the unofficial name Elvisaurus. These theropods had a tall and narrow skull, measuring about 65 centimeters, which is about 25 inches. It is believed that Cryolophosaurus had a small brain, which was more primitive than those of other theropods. The lower jaw was deep and strong. Its sharp and pointed teeth were adapted to tear flesh and rip the prey apart. It is still unknown if they may have had feathers. There is evidence that a juvenile Cryolophosaurus scavenged on the same species' carcasses. Some broken teeth that didn't have roots were found nearby, suggesting it lost them naturally. Classification of dinosaurs is always a difficult task for scientists. Researchers had problems to establish Crylophosaurus because it had a mix of primitive and advanced characteristics. For example, the femur has traits of early theropods, whereas the skull resembles much later species of the clade Titanure and their representatives from China, such as Sinraptor and Yangshuanosaurus. On this basis, in 1994, Paul Serrano et al. placed Cryolophosaurus in the taxon Allosauridae. Since the first description, the taxon has changed several times. The recent science from 2020 suggests this dinosaur to be a derived neotheropod, close to Avarostra. It puts it in a position between Zupisaurus and Dilophosaurus. Well, let me tell you a little something about me When it's Saturday night, I need to blow off some steam These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like. And consider joining our Patreon. Links in the description.